The headlines continue to pour out of Chicago of multiple people shot, multiple people killed. Uh, more questions about how the migrants are impacting things on the ground and uh, a whole host of other things as well with uh, just a few weeks here before the Democratic National Convention in Chicago uh, and all of the protests there are lined up. I uh, always enjoy getting a uh, fresh take from independent Chicago reporter William J. Kelly. He joins us now uh, to, to give us a breakdown of some of those headlines that have been uh, making uh, news, not just in Illinois, but across the country as well. William, thanks for taking time with us this morning. Uh, what are some of the, the biggest things that happened over the weekend we need to know about? Well, God bless you, Greg, and thank you. Um, well, sadly, it's a lot of the same news. 43 shot is the last number. Uh, that that we've heard, I I, I have a feeling that that's going to double by the time they uh, you know update it today. Uh, you know there were a couple of weeks ago, Mayor Johnson announced he was very happy he was spending another one hundred million dollars. Greg, can you even think about that for a second? Uh, that he that he got from the business community now. Members of the business community that I talked to said that they felt extorted that they. Uh, we essentially felt like it was give us the money or else uh, routine. Um, well, but, but William, could, that, could, could that have been, you know, or else there's going to be continued crime? Because, I mean, you've got smash and grabs. What was it? I think it was last I, week. There was a smash and grab at a, uh, 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 what is the big high end? Uh, starts with a B. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> uh, Balenciaga. Thank you, Balenciaga. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and and another one this weekend, including Saks Fifth Avenue, which is right on Michigan Avenue. And I know for a fact I walk past it every day. They've got uh, layers of security like you're walking past the Hague or something. OK, mm -hmm. I don't know what, you know, uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is that that these these smash and grabs, armed robberies, shootings, there was a hatchet attack at a McDonald's because somebody was unhappy with their meal, uh, you know, uh, you know, th these are things that happen that are happening out of control, despite the hundreds of millions of dollars that are being spent every other week. OK. Um, and by the way, as a reporter, Greg, and you can feel my pain on this one, uh, there was a time where we could ask where where is this money being spent? How is it being spent? You know, if it's I mean. Like I remember when I was a child, I don't know about you, Greg, I grew up on the South side of Chicago, by the way, I don't remember anyone paying my dad a hundred million dollars to teach me not to uh, rob people. Okay. Um, you know, every time anyone ever asks what these youth programs are, they always mention basketball. How many, you know, how much, how many millions of dollars do basketballs cost, Greg? I'm, I'm having, I'm starting to like trying to do the math myself and it's just not adding up. Well, and, you, and you, when you look at you know, the overall spending, of course, Chicago, um, you've got uh, the, the public tax dollars that are being used for this, but also the business dollars, uh, the private money that's going into this, but the state tax dollars as well, $180 million for this fiscal year that just started last month. Uh, and yeah. that's to you know go to violence intervention programs, but also uh, summer youth uh, jobs programs. I, that, do you feel that maybe if there was a different approach, like, for instance, uh, ensuring that the economy was growing because, William, uh, economic numbers don't look that great, Illinois, uh, higher than the national average for unemployment, and Chicago, uh, highest unemployment of major metro areas at 5%, uh, and you've got layoffs announced in various places, I mean... Is there a different approach they're not looking at here, like changing the economic landscape so that jobs are created? Well, yeah, exactly right, Craig. And, and you know, these violence interrupters, in, in, the, in many cases, they're self-proclaimed uh, ex-felons. Uh, you know, are these really the people that we want uh, <laughs> uh, patrolling our streets? You know, that money might be better spent on uh, actual law enforcement police officers. There's, uh, you know, there was a protest today, uh, this weekend, Greg, though, you know, it's good news. Uh, uh, some Chicago Democrats decided that they wanted to protest shootings. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't, uh, they weren't protesting any of the hundreds, if not thousands of unsolved shootings and murders in the city of Chicago. They had one shooting in mind, Greg, that they were very, very angry about that they wanted to protest. And it didn't even happen in Chicago. It happened in Springfield, Illinois. You know, so, I mean, there seems to be some kind of a major disconnect between what 
you know, taxpayers, law-abiding citizens, even the law enforcement, you know, experts would consider to be, you know, uh, productive policies and just um, angry people marching around Chicago, Greg. William Kelly joins us here. Uh, of course, you're uh, you know talking about the Sonia Massey shooting uh, in Chicago uh, or in Springfield, actually, from a Sangamon County uh, Sheriff's deputy that uh, was uh, now locked up, uh, charged with murder. Uh, it, it draws all kinds of questions about the um, uh, policies that police have in, in talking and confronting individuals like Sonia Massey was calling for assistance. Uh, but, you know, it, listen, William, you just had in Chicago a... Uh, Cook County Sheriff's deputy uh, that was shot and killed, uh, and they caught that assailant. Um, that's just one of several police that have lost their lives, either on duty or off duty, from uh, robberies that the assailant had a firearm. Um, I, I'm going to play this, and I'll reiterate it to you because I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it, but uh, here is uh, the, the police superintendent being asked last week um, about, you know, do we need more policies to uh, to ultimately be in place to uh, go after crime and uh, just give us a moment here william i'll reiterate to you what uh, uh, larry snelling had to say we can talk about policies obviously we need um, tougher laws we need uh, tougher gun laws uh, we need more accountability when it comes to people who are committing acts of violence but at the same time policies are not enough we need people to get engaged. We need people to, to be involved. So he says that uh, they can talk about policies all day long and tougher gun crimes and stuff like that, but uh, you can also talk about you know punishing people for violent crimes. But he says it takes people to get involved. Uh, and, and, and he said the community needs to step up. Uh, is the community stepping up in these cases where you've got thousands of potentially unsolved shooting crimes? Well, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult for the community to step up if the person who just committed the violent crime is right back on the street. Um, ask yourself who in their right mind would honestly want to testify. You'd have to be a pretty unique individual to uh, to say, yeah, the man that just uh, broke into my house, uh, brutalized, uh, raped, robbed, murdered, whatever the case is, um, I'm going to go to court and testify against him. And He's also on my front doorstep as we speak. No, I mean, who's going to yeah. who's going to uh, speak up when the uh, the Cook County State's Attorney, the judge, the the Cook County Sheriff, they just keep putting these people right back in, uh, right on the same street, the same block, uh, as it, you know, as we refer to them in Chicago, uh, as the uh, as the, when when the the original crime and the victim are are still located. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's out of control where we, I guarantee you we won't be hearing the president or the governor or the mayor speaking out against the shooter or the murderer, uh, the person who shot and killed this uh, Cook County uh, Sheriff's yeah. deputy that we won't hear about that. We do. I do hear that a hundred thousand protesters are coming to Chicago. What they're protesting, uh, you know, I'd be I'd be curious to know. Yeah, and looking at uh, the, the headline again from that uh, sheriff's deputy in Cook County that was shot and killed uh, in a, a robbery. Uh, Cook County Sheriff uh, Tom Dart talked about guns, but others were like, well, what about the suspect here you guys arrested? Uh, which, by the way, I mean, the, <laughs> the information that they got uh, from all the cameras, uh, he went to one hospital with a fake name, went to another hospital with a fake name, even DNA samples linked him to the crime, so they got him essentially, you know, red-handed. Uh, but... Uh, he had a record, William. He had yeah. a record. Kim Fox, the state's attorney up there, explaining that he had gone to prison, sentenced to eight years in 2020. Check that calendar. It's 2024. He was he had an eight-year sentence, but he's out. And she said that you get good credit for 50% off, plus the time that the person was in custody prior to the trial. Uh, so I'm hearing that Illinois prisons are not overcrowded in some instances right. i mean what what is going on here when, when when more violent people are taken to the streets and getting arrested going to prison but then getting back out onto the streets exactly right and, and that and but but here's the good news greg uh governor pritzker and mayor johnson have guaranteed the safety of their dnc party guests that are uh will be arriving in chicago 
this uh, this month, and I'm looking forward to reporting live uh, with you uh, from the convention. the The fact is that you know the the people of Chicago are not are not being uh, kept safe. Um, uh, my sources tell me that the, the 100,000 protesters will be bussed in to protest the DNC convention. Um, it, it uh, you know, it, it really is a head scratcher. What exactly they're protesting? What do they want? I, uh, it's, um, it, it, you know, it, it, it kind of reminds me of 2020 a little bit. Uh, people are uh, people are telling me experts and just the man on the street that they uh, are expecting extreme violence, Greg. Well, I imagine uh, we'll hear everything from uh, protests over uh, police activities to protests against the non-citizen migrant surge and how the city's handling that to protests against the process the Democrats are taking to uh, essentially uh, crown uh, Vice President Kamala Harris as the uh, presidential candidate. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. William Kelly, independent reporter out of Chicago. Always appreciate your time. We'll talk again soon, all right? God bless you. Thank you, Greg. It is Illinois in Focus daily, each and every weekday morning here. I'm Greg Bishop. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for America's Talking Network, and uh, keep up to date with what's going on. Again, the center square will be on the ground in Chicago for the Democratic National Convention starting uh, August 19th. And uh, if you want to stay up to date uh, with our daily reports, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.